So we have a lot of advantages. Now, we've reached a, 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 a current level. We are one of the most successful countries in addressing absolute poverty. But this doesn't mean that the, the, the gap between the wealthy and the poor have not you know, uh, increased. And that's a serious issue. So where do we want to be? Now, what does the new economic model represent? Three key objectives. We need to make it very simple so that everybody understands it. We want to be high income. We want to be inclusive. That means society is equitable. And we want to be sustainable. You know, this is not a short-term growth, but long-term growth. So if we want to be an advanced country by 2020, what are the key characteristics? It clearly has to be market-led, well-governed, regionally integrated, entrepreneurial, and innovative. So what would it mean for the Rakya? It should mean better benefits, better jobs, attractive homes, high mobility, better health care, access to better quality education, advancement based on merit, better Malaysia, environmentally, good safety net for the vulnerable. Now, in particular, you know, this doesn't mean that we ignore the poor, the disadvantaged, and the bottom 40% of the population. You know, continue, we will continue to, 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 to push for a better safe social safety net, better education, you know, better you know, uh, 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 surroundings, and better distribution. But we, to do this, we need to do things very differently. Now, as accountants, we know, you know, increasingly the world has shifted from everything about hardware to more and more about software. Right? It's easy to talk about hardware, but it's much tougher when you're in a new knowledge economy. So we have to do things very differently. Previously, we were talking about capital accumulation. Now we're talking about productivity. Previously, we were central strategic planning now greater autonomy. Previously, we were G3 oriented. Now we are oriented towards the Asia and Middle East where the income growth is. Previously, we talked about state-led accumulation. Now we're talking about private sector-led. And remember, we did this once before. We did this in the mid-80s when we had the first oil crisis. And it was very successful. It led us back to recovery you know, growth. We need to have equity of outcomes and preferential access you know, from, move from this to equality of opportunity, draw the best out of all Malaysians, right? But ensuring that those who are disadvantaged will be given support. We need, you know, we, we previously were restricted on foreign skilled workers to protect locals. Now we need to enhance the networks of professionals. And that's what accountants are all about. We need to pick sectors for growth. You know, that's what we used to do. Now we leverage on the inherent capability of firms. To sum up, Given the fact that we now have to make choices, we, you know, there's a phrase that we've used, in the past we have been the rest, best of the rest, that means with the pack, how do we break out of that middle income trap? We need to make the best of what we have. You know, in a, in a, in a previously rich oil environment, we could pour a lot of money down many choices. Today, the revenue resources are dwindling. We will become a net, oil import, net energy importer by 2015. We have to make some really tough choices. So we need to go through a advanced K-based activity. And all this is about the knowledge economy. You know, it needs to change into mature legislation, excellent institutions, diverse market, stable macroeconomic environment. So how do we get there? Now that's crucial, right? How do we get there? How do we get there is that we need enabling action, a big push to transform. We have six major strategic initiatives. Improve functional labor market, increase private sector profile, re-engage your public institutions, improve national base, transform structure, reform fiscal framework. And that's the, you know, the high, aim, high income inclusiveness and sustainability. But this one hasn't shown we will continuously have a feedback review and revise. And that's all about execution. You know, I mean, it's not just one, one Malaysia, you know, you know, people first performance now. Performance now means we need to continually review where we've succeeded, where we've failed, how do we revise, how do we move forward. 
So the enablers would require us to break the logjam of vested interests, prepare the rugged for change, coherent big push to push growth. And these initiatives are we are one we're pushing, and you know these are the areas that we need to consider, right? Now we will leverage on what we have. What we have is we've, we've selected sectors, for example, financial services, oil and gas, palm oil, electronics, tourism, agriculture. All these are our strengths. We're looking at each one of them. We're drilling down into the areas we think make a lot of sense and the government will be a facilitator and enabler to push this area. So the characteristics you know, uh, uh, of Malaysia in 2020, we will move on these and these are the aspects that we will look at. Now, what are the strategic initiatives? These strategic reform initiatives are crucial. As you know, we're already moving on the institutional reforms. You know, uh, Datu Idris Jala uh, and uh, you know, uh, Tan Sri you know, Ko, Ko Sukun is already pushing in that area on the government delivery systems and reform. We are looking very carefully at the fun improve the functioning of the labor market. We're looking at how to improve the national talent base. We need to transform the infrastructure, reform the fiscal, and improve the private sector structure. As the Prime Minister has said, there are basically four pillars to this. There is the One Malaysia, there is a government transformation program, there is the budget and the 10th and 11th Malaysia plan rollout, and there, this is where we are going to build the next building block, the economic transformation program. You know, one is related to government, the other is related to the private sector. We need to change both. You know, it's useless for the private sector to just complain, well, the government has to change. If the government is changing, what is the private sector doing about changing? Those are issues that it's, it's mutually reinforcing, okay? And that's crucial here.